Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Hey, you know what we haven't done in a long time? Uh, run a mile. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Why would I run a mile if someone's not even chasing me? It doesn't make sense to me. I think twice before you even drive a mile. <laughs> it's like, do I really need to go there? Okay. We, <laughs> thank you for your input there. We haven't gone into our um, uh, inbox. Oh, that's true. That's true. We they're, have And they're emails. piling up. Oh, like you can't believe yeah, it. they're piling up. I opened it up this morning. I was like, hey, wow, whoa. We yeah. got to address this, and we will uh, on our uh, Inbox Me segment, which is next. All right, thanks for watching today. Here it comes, roll it, inbox me. Okay, Ronnie, uh, let's go into the mail bag, if you will. <laughs> wow. You're not much of a bag. Mm. Okay, uh, let's see. The first one today comes to us from Elizabeth, and she lives in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, how convenient. Yeah. Wow. I bet she gets a, long, a lot of wrong mail. Probably. Dear yes. Ronnie and Lou. Okay. What does a grocery stalker earn? Stalker. S-T-A-L-K-E-R. Stalker. I like, I like what she went. how she went that. Yeah. yeah. My nephew is applying for stalker. <laughs> really? Do you have to apply? I think you have to belong to a temp agency. <laughs> yeah. They, they get your stalker work. And you have to have a white van. Uh, that would be good. Yeah. And candy. Yes. <laughs> I'm true. <laughs> I'm trying to help him negotiate a good salary. He works real hard, so I think they should pay him more. I think that he's worth at least $10 per hour as a stalker. Hmm. Mm, that's not worth my time. No. I'm well, going to stalk what? somebody. It would have been much better if he was applying for like the produce section of a supermarket, mm -hmm. and then she could negotiate him a good salary. That's, I think that's how I would go. <laughs> Okay, Elizabeth, thank you so much. Uh, I would say grocery stocking is not a very promising career, so avoid that. Go, yeah. go. How about a stalker? Like, you know, stocking the shelves. Yes. Yeah, that would be good. Stocking. Yeah, and maybe $11 an hour for that. All yeah. right. Okay. Now, let's get to the next one. All right. This one from uh, Danny in Oakland, California. That's, uh, that's pretty close to our home. Yeah, not too far. Uh, if you killed someone in a home invasion... Do you go to jail asking for a friend? <laughs> well, Danny. Okay, Danny. Uh, Ronnie, this is right up your alley. Yes. So, I, first of all, where are the bodies hidden? I need to know that. I'm going to write that down yeah. real quick. Where uh, are the bodies hidden? So, mm -hmm. it, again, in California, mm, yeah, you might temporarily. In some states, like if you were in Texas, they'd actually probably throw you a parade. <laughs> So, consider moving to Texas. A lot of my friends are. Yeah, you might have too many opportunities there in Oakland. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're going to run out. It's, oh, right now, it's a target-rich environment. <laughs> but at some point, that's going to dwindle. Yeah, sorry, Danny. I, I think a move is in your near future. But thank you very much for your email. We appreciate it. Have we given our email addresses? I don't think so. Give yours for uh, Corvette. I'm sorry, Ronnie uh -huh. at menaresosmart.com. I haven't had that very long, have you? No. <laughs> Mine is Lou at the aforementioned menaresosmart.com. So uh, send your emails for your questions. Keep them coming. Whatever it might be. And feel free to leave comments at the bottom of this video. It's there. Yes. And while you're at it, before we get to the next letter, if I haven't asked you lately, would you please subscribe to our channel? Oh. It's called the Gallagher Entertainment Network. And there are two shows on there now. Our show, of course, Men Are So Smart. And another show that you'll find that's called Turn to Health with Kelly and Lauren. So be sure and check that out and give that a like as well. We should probably both be watching that. Like, yeah. Turn to Health. <laughs> yeah. I think I passed that turn off. <laughs> I might have to double back. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, redirecting. Oh, here we go. This one from Roger in Hotlanta. Hotlanta. Do you think... There will ever be peas in our time. Well, I think there's peas for dinner tonight. Honestly, I'm um, gonna. I had green beans last night. We had uh, call it uh, not cauliflower. We had uh, broccoli, broccoli last night. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. See now, I'm gonna go through. Oh, thank you, Buster. <laughs> I'm gonna refer. I'm gonna go back to 
uh, John oh, Lennon and say, give peas a chance. They're really good with mashed potatoes. Yeah. You, you know, because this... you can stick them on your fork. and it's, it's, it's all about, you know, the war with carrots is over. Give peas a chance. I could not have said that better. Ronnie, you're... You're very smart. I, I'd been thinking about this for a couple seconds. You should be on a show called Men Are So Smart <laughs> and Lou. Man, All right. Men Are So Smart. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> you know, you cross me one more time and I'm changing the name of the show and you're out. Men Are So Smart. <laughs> Grammatically not so smart, but still it makes a point. Man be so smart. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no. All right. Next up, Ronnie. Uh, let's see. Carol in Bakersfield, uh -huh. California. <laughs> Do you ever fall asleep in a bath tube? T U B E. Hmm. A bath tube? That sounds like something from the future, <laughs> where you get in there and it's kind of like a washing machine. That's got to be a typo. She must mean a bath tube. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, I'm not. Uh... Ronnie, I don't even know the last time I took a bath. I. I was probably 10 or 12 years old. I know. Yeah. Um, and especially in a bath tube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Carol. Um, closest thing, you know, we have a hot tub. So uh -huh. the closest thing we I come to a, a tub is my hot tub. Okay, so bath tub. Yeah. Got it. All right, yeah. And I, and I have that, that hot tub is warm and it's relaxing. I'm down. <sighs> hey, maybe we could do the next episode from the hot tub. There you go. I didn't bring shorts. I'll have to be naked. It's it is that's problem. I mean it's that's not a problem. No. Yeah, we're right. I'm not sure what you're saying. It's not clothing optional. It's clothing. No. Oh, okay. Well, yes. um, I'm not sure I want to get in that tub with you. <laughs> Just this point. Maybe a few beers and lunch. You there never you know. Go. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. This is this one is a little more uh, extensive, Ronnie. Oh, okay. I might have to really rack your brain on this one, okay. dear Lou and Ronnie. Yeah. I've heard you guys talk about each of you being married for a very long time. Yes. Do you have any advice for a guy who is thinking about getting engaged next weekend? Signed, oh. Lyle in Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow. Huh. I wonder if they'll have Elvis marry him. That would be cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wait hey, in fact, we could get that guy from your trip. Yes. That Elvis would be great. I've got a picture of him here. Check Six. him out. What do you think? Since Hot August Nights is over, I'm sure he's available. He's probably free, huh? Yeah. And he, uh, he's even got all the poses you know, <laughs> for the Elvis thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, oh, and thanks for your feedback on our Elvis episode that we did recently. Oh, yeah. Too. yeah. All comments are great. Perfect. All right. So marriage, Ronnie. You've been married 32 years? 33. 33 years. Yes. And I've been married 35 years combined. Two marriages. Okay. Eight and... 27. Dang. Um, wow, I didn't know there was going to be math involved here. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go all math on you. It's crazy. Uh, it's more like calculus to me. <laughs> uh, so, Ronnie, some advice for a guy who's thinking about getting uh, engaged. Um, I would say don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, end of story. Thanks for watching today. <laughs> I wish I had my, my father of the bride speech. Because in it, I had some some tidbits for the new groom, the new husband. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was, when you're right, just be quiet. Mm -hmm. Don't you don't have to brag about it. Don't further illustrate your. However, point. let me tell you, you're not going to be right very often. No, it so don't happen. don't worry about that too much. Mm -hmm. And then also, and this one is is kind of a it's not really a funny one, but it's kind of true. And you know who says it? Judge Judy. I know you're going to go to the judge. Yes. So God gave you two ears and one mouth so you can listen twice as much as you talk. And I think that listening is a big, big part of, you know, of a marriage. I know my wife is always nagging me or something. I can't remember what she said exactly, but... She wants me to pay attention or I, I, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Were you talking? Yeah, I thought, but... I, I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> See, there's a problem. Yeah. It's mine. I own it. Uh, you know, there's so many things that I can say about this. And I could go the funny route or the serious route. Maybe I'll just give you a little bit of both. How's that? 
Number one, there is no reason for a man to be whipped in a relationship. And here's what I mean, and it's a very subtle difference. Let's say Ronnie calls me and he says, Lou, let's go to the Beach Boys concert at Thunder Valley on Saturday night. That happened. Okay. So some people would go to their significant other and say, honey, would it be okay if I went with Ron on Saturday night to the Beach Boys concert? That's crap. That's not how a marriage is supposed to work. No, you're just supposed to sneak out of the house. Exactly. No, that's not right either. No, I would go to my significant other and say, hey, Ronnie and I are going to go check out the Beach Boys on Saturday night. The concert's about 7 o'clock, and I should be home somewhere after 10 or something like that. Yep. And then she would say, oh, great. Have a great time. You guys are going to love that. Great that you guys can go together. Not, I have to ask permission. Right. I have to ask the boss uh, you know what? If you if that works for you and your relationship, more power to you. I don't see it that way. Uh, I think you need, both need to be individuals. Do the things that you like to do separately. Yeah. And also make time to do the things you enjoy together. Together. Yep. I know Vicky sometimes, and it's, it's funny, but it's so after thirty three years, this is kind of how we roll. She'll just say, "Hey, do you have any plans for tonight?" No. And then she'll say, uh, I'm going to uh, Red Hawk Casino. And they're giving away something. And so, like, yeah, and she knows I don't like going that much. But she'll say, do you want to go or can I just go for a couple hours? I'm like, yes, go. Exactly. <laughs> you know what yeah. I would do in that? I, I, here's, here's me. If my wife did that, I would order pizza, have it delivered, and eat it in bed with the dog laying there. That's my perfect night. Yeah. No one to disturb me. Yeah, I love that kind of time. For sure. Yep. If going and dropping some coins in a slot machine makes you happy, by all means, please make the time to do that. It's yep. good for you. Yeah. And what's good for you is good for us. Right. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. There's some advice right there. I'm not saying be a, a asshat. You know, well, and it's different if you're just going out and going to a bar and picking up women or right. dudes in your case, whatever. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> well, breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. So that's completely different. But if you're doing something with a friend that is completely innocent and totally innocuous, then, hey, by all means, knock yourself out. Besides, we're too old. <laughs> yeah. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that. Whoa, my voice just changed. Finally, <laughs> after 59 years, my voice changed. I was just thinking about that. Um, what if, Ron, what if, and this is a horrible hypothetical. Let's say you found yourself alone at age 60 due to whatever circumstances not important in this case. I would find an adult and mm -hmm. have them find my parents. Okay, that's going to be a little difficult, Ronnie. A little difficult. I think you're talking about one of those psychics. And I don't mean horn psychic, for those of you that listen to the radio show. Um, you know, you just... Uh, and you know what? I, thankfully, Vicky and I are both fairly healthy. and But I have... We've lost several friends from El Camino just recently. Yep. El Camino High School El in Sacramento, High School. California. And they're all our age, some younger. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does give you quite the sense of mortality. Sure. And um, it's my greatest fear. Uh, I, I know. I've told you that before, but yeah. dying is something that I fear. Well, and uh, mine is running out of money before I die. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's too <laughs> <laughs> that ship has sailed. <laughs> Trust me on this one. Uh, but what I was going to say was, okay, you're 60 years old and you find yourself wanting to meet another person. And, and let's just say it's okay. It's what was supposed to happen. Right. Imagine having to go to the bar scene. I can't even imagine. At age 60. Or go through the dating scene again. No. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what that would be like. I think yeah. back on those times when I was like 21, 22 years old. Oh boy. And um, the trouble that I would get into. It was strenuous, that was hard work. <laughs> it really was. Yeah, it was. You know, and also, also there were no cell phones. No. I was really cool 
because I had a beeper for my car alarm. Yeah, I had a pager. Yeah, for uh, my car alarm. Oh, I had a pager from the, the department, the yeah. department. I, I just, I couldn't even imagine what that would be like. Uh, I, and I, I certainly am not envious yeah. in any way, shape, or form of millennials that are going through that right now. But Well, with any luck, I'll die before my wife. And then I won't have to go through that. <laughs> and she'll have to. Ha <laughs> ha. Sucks to be you. Live. <laughs> I'm praying I go first. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, oh, by the way, Lyle, thank you very much yes. for the email. Once again, our email address is I'm Lou, uh, Lou at uh, menaresosmart.com. I'm Ronnie at menaresosmart.com. And we would uh, really enjoy your comments below. Uh, we get a kick out of them, and we do our very best to respond as quickly as we can. Ronnie and I separately, of course, yep. um, at different times. But we do get back to you. Absolutely. And uh, we appreciate them. Subscribe As to evidence, our channel. Evidenced right here. And we get a tons of yeah. emails. Yeah. And, and we answer each and every one of them that yep. we can. And we're glad. Oh, that's what we forgot to do. Wrap up the Inbox Me. Oh, yeah. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. And we'll see you on the next episode of Men Are So Smart. Till then. look okay i think it why does. is that square around my face so i can't see if my forehead is shiny uh it's a instagram filter you're gonna be a robot in this oh cool yeah is that like um it's a focus oh what do you call those bendable things that take different transformers <laughs> you're a transformer am i a transformer <laughs> yeah. what am i gonna trans in transform into I wonder. uh a wooden puppet we'll call you pinocchio that was not my hope it's i aspired to something greater than Got a long nose. Hmm, I don't know. I think that's. I think uh, that's the, right. the puppet doesn't even have a brain. It's right in your wheelhouse, though. Mm. It's yeah. Yeah. I can see you as a puppet. Wood, long nose, no brain. Be popular with the ladies. Lie to me. Lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>